Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and I know you're all waiting for Godot, ha ha ha, especially Godot 4, but the thing is, Godot 3.4 just dropped, and there is a ton to like in this release. Some features ported back from Godot 4, and some completely new features. This is actually a really impressive release, and we're going to jump in and take a look at it right now. So let's start things off straight away with a hands-on demonstration of some of the things I think are coolest about this release. We're going to start off with the new room system. So what you can do is part of occlusion culling is you can set up rooms, room managers, and portals. And it's a way of telling the game engine uh, what data it needs and it doesn't need. So potentially there's less geometry, faster performance, and so on. This was backported, backported from Godot 4. And here you can see a simple example. We've got two rooms. We have a room on this side, which is the kitchen. We have a room on this side, which is the lounge. And and then in between them, as part of the kitchen set, we have a portal. The portal is marked up as a two-way zone. And then we have a room manager, which has a list, which is this guy right here, of rooms. So we've got the kitchen, the lounge, and freeform. And what we can do, and I'll show you this actually probably best demonstrated by running, you can see how the game engine sees the data in the scene. So we're going to run this example, and I'm going to switch. Uh, well, here, we'll walk over. You can see it's standard room. You can look in between, so I think we're technically in the kitchen right now, and here is the dining room, and now what I can do is turn the bug information on, and see it's showing you in grayscale what the engine can see and what it needs to render. So we've got, uh, we're seeing the back room and so on, but I'm going to go over here, so see all of a sudden, it doesn't need to see that stuff. Same thing over here, doesn't see it. And if I slowly rotate, so you're going to see... Wall not showing the geometry, so the wall geometry for the other room doesn't need to be drawn now because the portal system knows where the, the gap between the two worlds is and when you're looking through it. So it's not until right there where you're actually looking through the portal that that geometry starts being drawn. And then we'll continue over here to that side there. Again, if I occlude it, so this wall is occluding, which is where that occlusion system comes from, the geometry behind it, that geometry doesn't need to be drawn. So we're using this new uh, room and portal system, you'll be able to set up indoor spaces, really complex ones, and the game engine will be able to um, know in advance how to optimize it, how things can, uh, what geometry it needs to draw and so on. Uh, you're going to see a lot of the logic is in the room manager uh, for how the potential visibility set, the controls for it available right there. Um, you can merge all of the meshes and so on and so forth. So uh, this should give you uh, the ability to break down portals, break down spaces into other spaces. It gives the game engine more information to work with and should result in better performance. Uh, not the sexiest thing to show on screen, but definitely a cool new feature. Now the next one is going to require me to go back to Godot 3.34 for a second. All right, so here we are. We're in Godot 3.3.4. So this is the last official stable release before 3.4, but this applies to all versions of Godot going back to at least three. If you're going and working with a theme, so come up here, theme. Let's just edit that guy right here. You'll see the theme editing was all done in this sort of preview window down here. Now, themes are really cool. What they enable you to do is basically set up um, skins. It's almost like CSS for Godot. So your game engine or your tool or whatever, you can use these themes for common controls, text, but uh, tree views and so on and you can edit what all of these things do and right now the setting for it is like this and, and it's kind of messy it's weird so I'm, I'm gonna have to put this in your memory so right now you have the previews down here your controls for things are kind of over here mixed with over here so if you want to control a new item you add the item right here you pick the type and so on and so forth so you got this weird combi menu going on right here so now we're gonna jump over to 3.4 and the theme editor in it all right, so this is Godot 3.4 point something. So 3.4 uh, point one. So this is the new release. And here we are again in the theme. You can see it looks very consistent, but now you notice we've got controls over here for controlling whatever we are actively working. So if you want to work on, change the font color and so on, you can do it here. You've got various different controls here all set up. The nice thing is this manage items is now this uh, editor with not this weird little menu pop down and you've got the ability to add a new item and control everything right here So if you want to go in and add an item in uh, You can do so so then we can start controlling it right here uh, You can import items in so if you want to do uh, you know each slider you can bring in the icon sets and so on So what they've done is they've kind of merged everything together in the theme editing uh, Made it much cleaner no weird weird combi menus things are where they they should be in theory. Uh, you've got new tools there. So what they've done is basically done a polish layer on the theming tools and done a bit of a, um, a UI makeover on top of all of that. Nice things on the whole. Again, not the sexiest thing you've ever seen, but definitely an improvement. 
And then my final hands-on demonstration, what we're gonna look at is a new exporting tool and the new tool that honestly, I don't see a difference in it. So what we're gonna do, create a new scene here. We're gonna create a new, uh, we'll do a world environment inside of that scene. Uh, we'll set that up, so cool. Yeah, new world environment. And so we have our new world environment going on here. What I'm going to do is just drop, go uh, back to my root node here. I'm gonna drop a couple of guns into the scene. So uh, guns of fun, we'll drop a guns of fun in here and we'll move that back. Now our world environment apparently uh, needs some light. So ambient light, color, white. All right, there we go. So we have our world environment. Uh, we have a new gun here. So let's just do, let's just do a couple of guns. All right, so we've got three guns in our world. And just to uh, really showcase the functionality here, I'm gonna do one more add and I'm gonna add an Omni Light. So Omni Light, all right, there we go, create. So we got three guns and a light. Very cool. Now go back to that world environment for one second. The one new thing we've got going on is a new tone mapping, which is supposed to be more accurate. So all along we've had aces. You're gonna notice when you switch out the tone mapping, it really changes the way the scene is rendered. You've got a couple of options, filmic, Reinhardt, linear, aces. And generally I like aces the best. And now we have a new one, aces fitted, which is supposed to do a better job of uh, whites um, more accurate whites and so on. In all honesty, I've played with it a ton. And between Aces Fitted and Aces, like there's a change, but I can't tell what it is. But if you're more, if you got more of a cinematic eye, this new mode, uh, tone mapping mode might be nice for you. But the big thing I'm here for is this feature right here. You go to project, and this one strikes me as a little weird. I'm about to export something, tools, export, but there's a menu called export that I have to go past. So I really expect it to be here or in file export, but no, it's in project tools export, which is unfortunate, but it is a cool tool. So what I'm gonna do is export this out. We'll dump this into my temp directory because all things must go in the temp directory. And we'll call this uh, plen uh, lots of guns GLTF. And this is gonna export out as a GLTF file, our entire scene. Uh, and this is pretty cool stuff. So it's going to bring it out uh, in bind. I think it's gonna make a bin file uh, by default. So it'll bring a GLTF binary file out. Now I have found that this particular feature in my own testing, uh, when I used it with like really large levels, was a little crashy. And as you can see here, even in this example, uh, there's not a lot in the scene and that took a little bit of time. So it's just one of those things definitely should be aware of. Now let's go and fire up good old trusty blender. And uh, we're gonna sacrifice our default cube here in just a, why are you taking so long? All right, here we go. All right, so default cube, goodbye. File, import, GLTF. Uh, that was of course in temp, lots of guns, import. And here you go. Our scene is now usable in uh, Blender. GLTF is kind of the future of import and export when it comes to Blenderland. Um, because it just kind of works the best. As you see, the results come through looking um, very good. Uh, definitely a, a good copy in. Another thing you'll notice is it actually keeps the name hierarchy. So we had the spatial as our root. So if I went back to Godot, you'll notice my root was a spatial node. And then under that, we get an Omnilite, sci-fi, sci-fi, and then uh, oddly enough, a world environment, which is basically nothing. Uh, so I don't know why that came in, but it did bring in the light as a light, like so. Uh, it brought in, it should have brought in the values for it. I don't know if I actually changed any of the lighting values on this guy, uh, but I believe it should have brought in the power or the strength of it when I brought it in. Uh, ditto if there was a radius involved. Uh, but it, um, it brought in the scene exactly as the scene was. Now do keep in mind, if you then go back and I do a file export GLTF and then bring it back into Godot, any logic or programming stuff that you've added on top will be gone. And that's basically the, the hands-on demo. I'm gonna show you one other neat little thing that was added, actually two neat little things. First off, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a new script here of type, uh, yeah, sure, GD script. All right, so there is our script going on. The neat thing here is you can have uh, an item in the uh, game world. So let's go ahead and grab, say, something from our world environment. I'll go back to our script. Say we were scripting on something here. Oh, I made a Lua script. Oops. I don't know if this is going to work with a Lua script. This was originally a project to demonstrate Lua integration. But now you can drag things in. 
from over here and you get the actual code name color. So if you wanted to change a parameter, so if you want to do tone mapping white value, you literally just bring it over and it will map it to the proper variable. That's a cool new feature for sure. I like that one. Another neat little quality of life thing that was added in this release is down here, you can now sort by type, by name, uh, and modify. That is, it's a little thing, but that one is huge. But there's a ton more little tweaks like that that we're going to see in just a second. So we're going to be taking a TLDR look at what is in this release. Now, do be sure to check out the full change log and release notes. There is a ton more detail than what we are going to be going through here, but I don't want this to be a six hour long video. So let's just take a, you know, 9,000 foot view of the major new features. So the first one we've got in the core, uh, promote object valid validity, and hard to say, surprisingly, checks to release builds. This means you can do a check to see if an object is valid at runtime in a release to make sure that you don't basically try to access an object object that has been deleted. We've also got support now for large files over two gigabytes in size. Uh, frame delta smoothing and fixes. This is going to make it, it's an optional thing you could turn off or on, um, but makes the uh, main loop and the frame changes more, say, vsync aware, should result in a smoother running. But if it does cause some jitters or problems to your game, you can turn it off, but it should make your game run a bit more smoothly. Uh, we've got improvements to the input handling. This is kind of a bit of a catch-all. There's some neat stuff, including like physical keyboard location, so you can actually set it up so that um, you use the keys where WASD are, but in other languages, the WASD keys, those keys, you know, uh, one to the right of the caps lock key and so on and so forth. Well, you can actually now actually say, okay, I want the keys that are at this location, even if they change from country to country. So uh, should make input handling for certain situations quite a bit easier there. Also some improvements on mobile input handling as well. We also have new crypto libraries, including straight out uh, you can now uh, encrypt and decrypt code, single line kind of function calls, very simple, nice stuff to work with. Moving on to the rendering world, we have portal-based and room-based occlusion calling. We covered that in the video. We also have the ACES fitted tone mapper, which we covered briefly. I'm going to show you again, but a bit better of an image, a still image that shows it in action, shows off what ACES fitted actually will do. On the particle side of things, we've got a new ring emitter for doing 3D particles. Uh, we've got improvements to the shader language and miscellaneous render support. Again, check the full chain log and release notes for more detail on all of these things. Um, on the platform side of things, uh, and on Android, we have scope storage, play assist delivery, and input responsiveness improvements. So your input should be a little bit better handled on Android platforms. HTML5, um, we've got, I think that's progressive web apps. I might have the acronym wrong, but it's something to that effect. And the neat thing here is we also have a new JavaScript interface. So you can actually call JavaScript code directly from your code using a JavaScript object should make interfacing with HTML5 applications in the host containers a heck of a lot easier. And then we've got audio workload support. And on the Mac OS side, we have mono universal builds. So you can build for both uh, Intel and the Apple Silicon now. Uh, GD native framework improvements, notarization. Uh, so this is one of those things you've got to do in this day and age when you're working with Apple is notarization rise your app. Uh, on the physics side, we've got some improvements in 2D and 3D physics, including uh, dynamic BVH for Godot Physics 2D. Uh, this was also implemented for 3D. Should just result in better physics simulations, faster, more reliable convex hull generation, revamped collision, collision layer grid in the inspector, and improvements and new features in Godot Physics 3D. Uh, on the asset pipeline side of things, we've got, uh, you can now export a scene as GLTF, as we saw in the video. Uh, we have lossless WebP encoding. Uh, WebP was supposed to be the future Future of graphics. It's funny, uh, Google doesn't actually use it even though they're behind it. Uh, and you know, they tend to still use ping and JPEG, but WebP is a great format if it's supported. Um, and now they have support for encoding of it in the asset pipeline, which is nice. WebP is a very viable texture format if you wish to use it. And then we got improvements in the editor, such as the revamped UI theme editor, which we saw in action in the video earlier on. Localized class references and general usability improvements, like what we saw with the filtering and the uh, bringing classes over to your code. Lots of nice changes there. Once again, do be sure to check the full release notes and change log. Uh, on that topic, the change log, I'm not going through this in detail, but I just want you to have like an idea of how much is in here. So there is a ton of fixes and changes in this release. So if you want to get the full details here, do check out the full change log. The nice thing is you can drill down and find out like the GitHub um, justification behind that change or improvement. So you can always learn more about them. And on that topic, we do have a bit more details about the ACES fitted. So here you can see the current ACES and here you can see fitted. And where it really shows up in a still image, see around the lights, 
there you can see. So there's one of the major changes. So, so uh, the whites and the lights kind of pop out a bit more. Same thing here. Uh, it's a, more of a blob down here, whereas here you're seeing more individual light. Now it doesn't really matter. It's not one is correct over the other. It's kind of an artistic choice of which one you actually prefer to work with. Um, and that's it. So if you want to grab it, again, Godot is available at godotengine.org. I have all of the relevant uh, links in the linked article uh, the one that we just looked at a second ago. So if you want to go and grab it, check out their Discord server, grab the change, um, the release announcement or the change log, they will all be linked there. And hopefully you found this release interesting. There is a lot in Godot 3.4. It's impressive, especially with a lot of the development efforts being focused on Godot 4, just how much they managed to squeeze into this release. So I'm impressed. Uh, let me know what you think of Godot 3.4. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.